Welcome to the C3 Church Global Podcast. I'm so excited for this one. We have actually been doing this for hmm, two times. Uh, we started off with um, leader and founder, C3 Global, Pastor Chris Pringle. And then we followed that up with uh, Kathy Green, a senior pastor at C3 Ride, and Amanda Ancliffe, who is C3 SYD. These women are sharing their heart around transition. And today I'm so excited because I have with me and with us, Bernie Kelsey, who is with the C3 Church Global Team, and Kelly Tebbit, who is the senior pastor at C3 Church Calgary West. Okay, there you go. So spoiler alert, this is a podcast about transition. And I really, my goal for this was to bring together a variety of women who are actually either have gone through transition or currently going through transition or about to go through transition. And this is an important topic because as everyone here knows, everyone goes through transition and it can be quite um, stressful and it can be exhilarating and everything in between. As a senior pastor of a church, especially with a church planting movement like C3, where there's a huge amount of pioneering, really finding our feet um, with transition, given that this is really the first and second generation of transition people, um, is, is, is tricky and exciting. And we think that there's so much that we can all learn from each other because everyone is going to go through a transition. So whether you're a young leader and you want to learn from some of the pros um, or you're looking at transition yourself or maybe you're 10 years away and you want to start preparing, we're really hoping that this podcast gives you some great insights and tools on how uh, women in this case are doing it. So I want to start off with my dear friend, Bernie Kelsey, who I love and truly admire in so many ways. Um, Bernie, you have been obviously through a variety of transitions over the years. And I really wanted to go back to one of the biggest ones when you left Sydney and the safety of your church family and transitioned to go to the United States and Long Island in particular, um, that was before the internet. That was before we were all connected. So going that far away was a really, it's a lot, it was more of a sacrifice I would probably venture than some of the sacrifices that we're making today. And I've heard some of your story whenever I've been blessed to attend Express, um, but I was wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing some of that here with us today. So um, what that was like for you then, and um, what were some of the lessons that you learned in that transition, and, and just maybe help us understand um, how we can do ours even better. So over to you, Bernie. Thanks, Val. Oh, look, this is such an honor and a privilege to be on this podcast with you Val and also with Kelly so thanks for having me today um yeah that was actually a really big transition you know and I don't think that we would have multiple transitions like that in a lifetime I mean we moved from Sydney to New York um that's 35 years ago actually wow. um I was um 20 nine years old and we had three small children seven five and two and like you said Val there was no internet uh the phone was a phone attached to a wall phone calls back to Sydney <laughs> was seven dollars 45 a minute you know and we're church planters and you know so we kind of uh you know found the obviously the arrival um challenging but the going the leaving the heading yeah. out um was it's kind of exciting uh we were full of vision and we were excited to put our hand to the plow in this church planting situation um and i think we were excited because we didn't know anything so we didn't know that we shouldn't be so excited <laughs> 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 we just thought, wow, this is great. We're answering the call and heading out on this great 
mission for God, you know, and uh, we felt right about it. The call was really confirmed through our leaders, uh, Pastor Phil and mm-hmm. Chris, and we were the second church plant to go out from Oxford Falls. Uh, there was one the previous year to London, and we were the second one. So there was a lot of intel that, you know, we didn't have going. We were green. We didn't know. Um, and so the sadness in leaving friends and family and leaving a full-time job and, you know, our kids were part of the kids' ministry and, you know, everything was everything was set and settled, you know, and suddenly we're out in this pioneer state mm. with zero, nothing. We didn't yeah. know anybody. And so everything, everything was new. And so I think that's the challenge but also the excitement, you know, of venturing forth into something new so we learned a lot um and uh you know that out of those learnings is really what we find ourselves doing today in terms of training church planters and you know god takes all of that experience and um hopefully wraps it around us with some wisdom and you're able to sort of uh pass it on to others so yeah it's totally um, a lot a lot to learn and uh, we're still learning. <laughs> I bet. So, so Bernie, tell us, just give us a, you know, just get, take a few minutes just to unpack. Um, you're, you've arrived in New York. Mm. Um, you don't have a church. You've told mm. us a story that you had some interesting neighbors that over the time oh, turned yeah. out to be awesome neighbors. So how, what would you give a young church planner who's going to launch out in a new city altogether and they don't really know a lot of people like how what what advice would you give them to stay strong and and not to lose heart in a situation like that mm. well there's so much coming against you and um you know i think you have to go out together you know husband wife on yeah. the same page you know have that kind of strength of togetherness i don't think you want to be you know, this is not about Mark being called and I'm just going along for the ride. I think we both equally felt called. So I think that's important. Uh, We were in total agreement about it. Um, I think, you know, when the challenges come, I think you've got to remember not to uh, turn the gun on each other (laughs) and keep fighting the forces out there, you know, together. Um, I've seen that really take church planters out where the pressure becomes so great that it becomes a a marriage battle or you know a challenge in the family that can really do them in yeah yeah so I think you know just keep um keep your heads strong and together and on the same page as much as possible and um keep talking you know having conversations I mean Mark and I really you know, I think for us in any kind of change or, and there's change all the time in life, you know, um, I would say um, keep talking and uh, keep gathering people around your life who are good confidants and people who can get um, get alongside of you and encourage you because yeah. you need lo- loads of encouragement. Um, but yeah, I think, um, when we faced those battles, we were actually, we were quite isolated Mm. and, uh, we didn't, like we said before, we didn't have the phone calls where we could just, you know, or people just to drop by. Um, one of the things we realized once we arrived and it's a silly little thing, but it was kind of like, I was down the shops one day and I was like walking, walking along. And I was like, actually, I'm never going to bump into anybody that knows me. Ever. <laughs> wow. It was a crazy wow. feeling. It was like, I don't yeah. know anybody. So I think in the church planning space, because it's new, um, you got to get ready to get um, making relationships and friendships. And one of the things that helped us was we, we had to get jobs. And so it, it put us right amongst other people and uh, connections and then, of course, the kids in school and so all the school Mm. and sport activities, we just got amongst it and um, started to make friends in the new space. Wow, that's that's good wisdom because um, the transition from of going from a church family Mm. out on your own, especially if you're going across country or even 
you know, between continents like you were requires, right? That transition requires that you are deeply rooted in your relationship to Christ and that Mm. your relationship to each other is as strong as it can be. And let's face it, it's these times where your, your relationships are tested because, you know, it's, and that is, you know, that's actually, um, I'd like to, I'd like to transition over to Kelly because Kelly, you were running church, doing your thing. And then you were um, given the role, you and uh, your husband, Lauren, of running the Canadian region. And that's, you know, it's a big ask to, you know, take on that spiritual burden and its spiritual weight. And, um, and often, like, I don't know about you, but like, even with, you know, not even, and with me, you know, it takes you outside of your comfort zone, right? Um and so that's that's a different type. That's another type of transition. So, how how did you sort of navigate that? What do you do when you know you're being thrust out of your comfort zone um, to ground yourself? Um, so we'd love I'd love to hear about that. Oh, definitely thrust out of my comfort zone. Being an introvert almost to the extreme, it was kind of just this really wow. Really, you want us? But I realized, too, like Bernie said, that Lauren and I were a team um, yeah. coming into yeah. this. But becoming Canadian overseers, first of all, for the longest time, a lot of our guys, we were friends. We were peers, yeah. all the yeah. Canadian pastors. And then when we, had, when we were appointed as overseers, mm. boy, that relationship changed. And wow. we, we had to build trust with these guys again and we had to i didn't i don't think we had to show who we are but we had to really build relational equity and i think for the first two years actually that was the greatest thing was just building relationship with all the guys and then not saying will you trust us but they just trusted us but it started sure. with relationships. So that's that's how we started. Um, and again, being the overseer just really pushed me out of my comfort zone. But yeah. at the same time, it probably was the best thing that I could have ever been asked to do. So yeah, it's good. I just wrote something about this recently because, um, you know, Adversity is actually what makes us, I think, and it is so uncomfortable. And, you know, being pushed out of your comfort zone isn't necessarily an adverse scenario, but, um, you know, we all have rough edges, whether we like it or not, even as <laughs> as old as I'm getting. Um, and so being pushed out of my comfort zone helps me to grow, to learn new things that I might not otherwise learn. Um, and it also rubs off some of those those rough edges that you know, are there. So, so tell us, like, share a little bit about, if you could, even just one example of like how being thrust out of that comfort zone took you to a new, better place or a place um, where you felt stronger and you may never have even pushed there, pushed into that had you not been sort of either asked to go there or pushed into that situation. Because often transition happens to us, right? We don't necessarily put our hands up for it. It kind of happens to us. So do you have like maybe one key thought about that or just an example of your own life? Well, all I can say is is during this time to, um, you know, again, when the pressure comes on anything, what comes out, you have to deal with. So I realized, you know, the insecurities um, yeah. surfaced. Um, yeah. There was just a whole bunch of, um, you know, self-doubt and all like just a whole bunch of self stuff that surfaced Mm. and instead of um continuing to hide that i had to deal with it and so Mm. i just i just always tell people if the lord surfaces something he wants to deal Mm. with it and so the insecurities um just made me more aware of who I am and who I'm not. And I really just love discovering who the Lord's created me to be and not trying to be any, 
any false person, but mm-hmm. no, this is who I am and being very secure in just being that. And if people like me, they like me. And if they don't, they don't. But I'm not going to pretend because I don't want to be false. I just want to yeah. be um, who I am. So it, it was good because it did. It surfaced a lot of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. I like that. I like that. That if something is to your point, like either you're being asked to do something different or something surfacing because of it, that's the Lord's, you know, prompting and, and it's an opportunity, right? And again, like if you lean into him and yeah, I love that. That's that spoke to me right now. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> um, well the thing is the Lord wants to use all of us. You know, yeah. he, he's living in us and he wants an expression. And each of us yeah. have a very different expression and and the world needs to just see the lord through each of us individually so that's great that's, i think that's a message yeah. for somebody out there right now mm-hmm. um that's awesome uh okay let's talk about men and women um transition you know people handle transition differently and men and women handle it differently and i'm not asking you to out your husbands or share any private you know like moments particularly but, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of women that are going through some transitions and we've talked about our husbands and like how they're handling it. And um, it's just been really fascinating to me, um, the different approaches that we might take as in a, you know, men, women and um, women are seem to be more communicative. Um, they're planners, like they're like, eh, let's get ready. Uh, they're more probably maybe more willing to bring others into the mix in order to think about that pathway forward. Whereas men tend to my experience with Simon is he's quiet. He's thoughtful. He takes time to really think it through before he shares it with me. I often hear about really big things after he's made his decision. It's really awesome. So I'm wondering, like, Let's start with you, Bernie. Like, what what are you, where where have you noticed a difference? Like, how are you? And again, don't get too personal, please. But um, <laughs> but so what do you think? Like, share some thoughts you're having or you've had over the years of transition um, with your husband. Yeah, well, I mean, um, we're different, obviously. And I think you've, you've um, nailed some of those differences from a male-female point of view. But then individually in your own relationships is so unique, you know. And I think perspective is really um, key in our marriages. I, I totally believe we're meant to help each other. Mm. And I think that it's not a competition or it's um, comparison or anything in that space. I think the way we've journeyed is... Um, and you and you do journey and you do learn through <laughs> through time and situations and challenges that come at you um but we we would talk a lot and i would definitely find myself in the details of the situation and mark has always anchored us as a family and in our marriage in the bigger picture and he yeah. sits really he sits so well in that space he's got such a strategic kind of gifting and he's got this long vision thing you know he even had a word way way back in the early 80s you know that you know the lord was making him a person that could see into the distance and the future and meanwhile i'm back here in the details going how are we going to do that (laughs) uh yeah (laughs) yeah. how are we going to pay for that how where are the kids going to be so i um i think you learn to um love what each brings to the situation i've learned that over the time that you know i we just let each other be who we are in that and take on that perspective and it makes a full picture you know it's um it, it complements uh the whole being together yeah it is a big topic isn't it, it the male female response to everything but i think we are meant to help each other and you know to relax into seeing who that person is and how they're viewing the situation because there is a gift in that to us you know mm. mark is always kind of for me it's always lifting me up out of the minutia 
And, yeah. you know, um, I love that, you know, because in, in the early days I would say with any change and there was so much change, I'd say to Mark, what's going to happen to us, you know? Yes. <laughs> Here we go again, it's another change. And he would always carry that it's going to be fine, you know. It's, you know, God's got a plan here, he's working it out. And um, But then he would also turn and, and be so... Um, grateful for the little detail that I raised that kind of saved us further down the track because we had addressed it. So, yeah, I think just working it mm. through together. Mm. That's good. I love that. I'm going to mm. remind Simon of that. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, Kelly, do you have any do you have any thoughts to add here? Well, I'm the same as Bernie. I think Lauren's the same as Mark, and I know that I'm more of a detailed person. Lauren's always had the bigger vision, and, mm. and and the thing is, he's learned to know that he needs me, <laughs> <laughs> because, okay. you know, he, he knows that there's so many details to accomplish it, so yeah. he, um, yeah, we've, we, we just talk a lot, and he'll dream, and I'll just say, okay, and he doesn't see me as a negative anymore, but, you know, when you're first married, it's kind of like, Oh, you're just you're so negative. It's not. I'm so detailed, <laughs> and and I see the pattern. Yeah. And so now now we talk about it and we'll laugh and and we just know that each other's strengths is what why we're here now. That's awesome. Yeah, it's funny because Simon did the same thing. When we first got married. He was like, "Oh, you're kind of negative," and, and you know. And I was like, no, I'm thinking about all the details. <laughs> so I do think that's like the male-female scenario. As Simon and I are looking at this, this transition, you know, it was important for me, for us to find actually an outside person to talk to so that um, it wasn't just us looking at each other, or navel gazing, or trying to figure out stuff that we just needed an outside perspective just to encourage both of us. I mean, it's, it's a big transition for Simon because I still have my job and this and that, and the other thing. So I was, and he's a very productive personality and loves working. He loves being a part of something. So, um, you know, so I just wanted to encourage him to start thinking early about what those next steps could look like. And I think that he would say that's really helped him a lot. Um, and really though, in the end, we're spending most of our time in prayer because, you know, God knows what he wants to do. And as long as we're obedient and show up, he'll use you. So to me, that's, you know, that's a, that's a big thing for us. Um, but I do want to just talk about um, transition as a place for grief, because, you know, whenever we often, when we trans, not always, but often when we transition, we do have to say goodbye to something. And there are things that have to die as we move on to the next thing. And so um, I don't want to throw you guys a curveball, but I'd love for you both to, uh, if you could just um, share um, just even one experience where, you know, there was a death of something as you were transitioning and you had to, you know, grieve, but, but what kind of got, what kind of got you through, through that? And I can relate Bernie to what you were saying about what's next, because as, since Simon and I got married, we've been on a huge amount of transitions. Um, and so every time we've gone through one, I've been thankful for the good stuff, but there's been a little bit of like, hmm, I felt a little, I felt a little sad. So do, would you mind sharing, um, you know, Bernie, do you have like a moment where you had to, you know, deal with a grief as a transition and then how that, you know, shifted for you or how you got through it where, and what you did? even to get through it? Mm. So <laughs> I'm just trying to think of an actual moment. Um, uh, actually, uh, we were farewelled from C3SYD after oh. 40 years of being on staff. So it's very fresh. <laughs> oh. And thank you. I mean, it mm. was a, um, a beautiful honouring moment. The team were beautiful. And Pastor Alan Jessen, who are the new lead pastors here at C3SYD, have just done a, a beautiful um, honouring journey with us. Yeah, and, great. And I think that's actually an important point about um, transition is that we, we, we need to press pause 
and honor the moment and honor the you it, the change is the turning of the page and it and it has to be acknowledged i yes. think that the deeper sadness can come sometimes when we just railroad through these um moments in our life which are important and we don't do a good journey with it and i think that can cause ongoing and difficult mm. kind of grief to get over so my encouragement would be to you know to personally take the moment to honor the season that has just passed and you know it's like raising family raising children you know you're mm. going through all these stages of growth and development and you know that first child when they go to school and you're standing watching the bus go and you just <laughs> you know you you they're happy but you're crying <laughs> just <laughs> so it's this this um crossover moments that all of us are experiencing you know big and small um yeah but i think that sunday afternoon that's just passed i did have just a quiet moment in myself and i realized wow 40 years you know um i was i was grateful that we have a 40 year story to to tell which is wonderful that by god's grace he's kept us on on the path on the track yeah. together Come on. you know yeah. and we've been able to um you know to share that story of you know 40 years on staff for mark i wasn't on staff for that long <laughs> um and then for the kinds of uh experiences that we've had through that to just take time to sort of thank god f for that um yeah. and then i did have a little bit of a cry you know it was like oh, I'm not going to be in this meeting or that meeting and I'm not going to know yeah. this or that or the other. And that's okay too. You know, it's there's a lot of letting go. And I think, yeah. you know, um, I think it's Henry Wordsworth said um, that the art of the beginning is great, but even greater is the art of the ending. And I think if mm -hmm. we don't do transitions, not perfectly, but at least, the best we can and if we don't um acknowledge the ending of something then i think yeah. we are crippling ourselves in yes. terms of moving into the new season so yeah it's a whole lot of prayer processing conversation letting go you know those spiritual practices that i think keep us um fully anchored you know oh amen i love yeah. that so you can move awesome. forward yeah Thanks for sharing that too, because you, like you said, that just happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Kelly, did you have anything to share um, around that? We're in transition right now. So um, for us, again, it's two years now that we've lost our house to a fire. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was such mm -hmm. an immediate change um, that nobody is ever prepared for it's and so yeah Huge. we like one day you have a house and the next day you don't have a house and you don't have mm. all the memories in the house like they're just gone so for the last two years actually we've been in a physical process of grieving yeah. um and tra transitioning through that because we're still not in our house we're still in a mm. rental like when it when a change comes you have to grieve it and you have yeah. to you have to go through the emotions. Yeah. And you can't just put it aside and you can't just think that it will just dissipate. For for us it was such like it's it's almost like PTSD. And so yeah. I can yeah. understand the shock and trauma of of I can empathize with people right now um that go yes. through that yeah. because it becomes a physical thing as well as a mental thing, as well as um, a spiritual thing, because, boy, have I questioned the Lord a lot, you know, yeah. in this process <sighs> and still ask the questions. Why? Where were you? And so my days mm -hmm. go kind of up and down. But, you know, the first place I ran to and still run to is the church. And mm. I can hardly wait to go on a Sunday morning and worship. Oh, and when yeah. we sang, we sang a song just this last week. And, you know, when I go through the fire <laughs> and I, I, it just, 
that just becomes so deep because until mm. you've gone through a fire, mm. like, you know, it's just kind of words. So I've just, we've both just allowed the Lord just to, you know, bring healing through people, through counseling, through books and all that. And I just think it's not wrong to, to seek what you need for in the times mm. and, and let the transition just go. Don't let somebody say, oh, well, you should be through it. You know, transitions yeah, take as long as, as the Lord wants to heal you. And so we've, we've come through a lot of change in the last couple of years, but the Lord's just doing such a beautiful work that we're just, we're really, really thankful for, you know, we're not thankful for the event, but we're thankful for the healing and the people and everyone that's coming out. Yeah, it's that's been, awesome. It's been good. That's awesome. We've obviously been, you know, it, you know, we've been along the journey, not next to you, but in your world through this. And it's just, I know that for people, especially those who've been close to you, uh, who I've spoken with, they just, wow, you know, just, the fact that you've weathered this incredible storm, not lost your way. Um, you know, let's not forget that we were also in the midst of COVID and all of that craziness. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we have a lot of admiration, a lot of admiration for you and a lot of admiration for you, Bernie, for also transitioning on such a significant role over these years. Um, mm -hmm. And so often um, role you know, the roles that we have, it's not hard for it to become our identity. It's entirely normal. You know, mm -hmm. we all talk about that. Like, don't let that be your identity. It's like, all right. <laughs> but, you know, reality check, like I've been working in this kind of job now for a gosh, 30 plus years. And, you know, it's part of my identity. It feels like some days, but um, and so that is a death unto itself, you know, so um, yeah, I think I, I think on that point, Val, like, thank you. It It's true because it is who you are in that, that season. But in yeah. the early days when we were um, first in the ministry, um, the Lord taught us a really big lesson in that space mm. so that the lesson was to not get tethered to our titles or restricted by our roles. And I think um, for me um, that happened. It's so funny. It's like back in 1981, um, we were the first, uh, well, Mark was the first youth leader in the church. You know, we found the church in 1980 and, and then we became the youth leaders and there were about seven kids in the youth group and we grew that <laughs> to about a hundred and then Mark came back from a prayer walk one morning and said to me the Lord's told me to give up the youth and I said what why would he do that and what will we be you know <laughs> you know because you get to yeah. do the um youth announcements on sunday night you know <laughs> yeah and um yeah. you know this is your big identity in life and yes. i mean yes. you get what i'm talking about it's like you of start course. to make an attachment to that and yeah we followed through in just simple obedience to that and we found ourselves not actually doing anything and that's where <laughs> the message you know to develop a good shelf image because <laughs> you felt like your life had been popped onto the shelf yes um, <laughs> yes was really that's that interior work i think you know we have the yeah. outside circumstances difficulties fires floods sickness yeah. illness change of job loss of somebody that's the external thing, but then it's how it impacts the interior yeah. world in our life. To Kelly's point, you know, what God does on the inside of us and how he yep. is transforming us. And that was a little moment of actually, it was a little lesson, but it's actually, we've lived that lesson through every season and every time our role changes or, you know, we're called something else, we just go, oh, Okay. <laughs> 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 that's good it won't last for forever but anyway yeah. we'll, we'll do the best we can with it while we've yeah. got it so yeah that's great you're 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 soldiers in god's <laughs> god's army just marching with marching. everyone shoulder shoulder <laughs> to shoulder amen mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've learned a lot. I've learned over the years from watching you and watching others and getting to know Kelly and Lauren, who have been such encouragers to us, to both Simon and myself. Um, so we need each other. That's we sure do. Yeah. We sure do. So one last question before we, we end our time together. Um, you know, there's that scripture that says, you know, your young men and women will prophesy and your old men and, and ladies will <laughs> dream dreams. And, you know, we're not young. We're vital, no doubt. Um, but I do know that I, this was precipitated by a blog that I wrote and I looked at every decade starting my twenties and what I expected in my twenties and what didn't happen. And then where it left me in my thirties and there, and th then on. And so at 61, the runway shorter. <laughs> and I think that was maybe one of the biggest realizations for me that, that age had crept up on me was that I don't have that much time to do certain things or that I'm not looking at a fresh new start ver versus the way I would have felt in my thirties or my forties or my fifties. And it was really sobering. Um, not bad, but sobering. And, but it did make me start thinking. And, mm -hmm. and I started thinking about that scripture and what does it mean to dream? And I'm just curious, you know, Kelly, what is that? mean for you? And I'd love to obviously hear Bernie, what you, what it means to you. Um, yeah. What does it mean to go from prophesying into dreaming, even if it's just, you know, an analogy? Um, yeah. What do you, what do you think? Well, dreaming um, is just a slower version of vision. And the thing is with, with if you quit dreaming, you're going to die. Like I, I think, <laughs> For yeah. like for us, we, we keep um, dreaming of the future and we dream of the future and do things as if we have um, like sowing the seeds because we're doing it for generations to come. Yeah. So mm -hmm. even for Lauren and I, like we're, we're planting seeds now, we're dreaming of our future. We're actually, Lauren and I are planting a little um, orchard back in Saskatchewan, oh. but we're planting trees and we're going to do things that probably trees will never sit under, but we're not yeah. going to quit moving forward and dreaming because you go towards, you know, your most positive or negative thought. So yeah. I think you have to keep moving forward towards positive thoughts. They're just like seeds and, and there's, there's not, there it will be an end, but if you just look at it as a, a continuation to the next generation, I just think, yeah, you, ha you have to beautiful. dream and plant and sow all the time. I yeah. love that. And you're literally doing that with your orchard. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. I feel like going Inspiring. and planting an orchard. I know. I'm inspired. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's also what you... Did, didn't when Oxford Falls, when Pastor Phil and Chris mm. um, exited stage, right? Yeah. Didn't you, there's trees that were planted early days and then the, everybody got a chance to plant a new tree. Yeah. So it's a, it's a theme here. So mm. Bernie, um, tell us, like, what does dreaming mean for you right now, for your future? Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's the taking of everything that you've experienced thus far and um, somehow that dreaming thing is just letting, I think right now for us we're imagining, you know, just mm -hmm. sitting in a, a little pocket of imagining what does our life look like beyond this particular role or this particular season. And um, I so agree, um, Kelly, you know, our whole wiring is just um, to give it, a way to to see others to see that younger generation i think it's about moving into um uh, a mothering and a fathering kind of spirit to to be calling um you know the younger generation on to n not like oh you you'll be great guys or whatever but actually more in the realm of like really listening to them and and hearing what they've got to say because they've got a lot to say and 
hearing what they're seeing because I think that is prophetic for the generation. And I I hope that we could sit in that space and be um, pulling um, that that goodness out of the next generation mm. um, and sit. Being like a cheerleader, I guess, cheering them on into that space because that's the future. And yeah. uh, we're not obsolete, or you know, we, we're saying, "Oh, yeah, we're old," and you know, that's true. Um, I I want to do that whole aging thing well. You know, I want to go there gracefully, as they say, as much as possible. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think just to to be um, in a space of fruit bearing for all the rest of our days so yeah we'll keep planting seeds like kelly said and and uh pouring water on on that seed and soil to see Mm. what comes forth but yeah it's not over you know we're we're not over and um there's much much to do you know and just one conversation with one person can just hopefully the podcast and what you're doing val it'll just really you know be helpful and encouraging yeah come on that's and that's really that's been the purpose of doing these these this this series um to encourage people who are going through transition again whether you're a young person and you're just starting out and everyone goes through transitions all through your Mm -hmm. life um Mm -hmm. or you're someone that's you know planning i just spoke with lesby warren the other day and she's looking at everyone else and starting to think strategically and creatively about their future. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, be a good example, be a light. Um, And I love what you both said there, planting that orchard, but also, and and also Bernie, um, the idea too of this new stage of being a sage uh, Mm -hmm. for the younger gen to help them and give them um, encouragement and um your life as a roadmap so mm-hmm. thank you both you are awesome women i'm blessed blessed to have you in my life um and i'm believing that this is going to help a lot of people so wow thank you thank you val thanks kelly bye